In the previous part of our look at two more sample tests, we had a look at those tests for parametric data. Um, just as it is possible to test for association um, or the extent of difference between two or more groups with parametric data using, for example, a t-test or an ANOVA, it is also possible to test association and difference between groups of two or more um, where the data is non-parametric. There are a number of tests that we're going to be looking at, and those are the chi-square test of independence, uh, Mann-Whitney, and the um, Kolmogorov um, Smirnov test as well. To start with, having looked at the test of difference that can be used with non-parametric data, um, we're going to have a look at the chi-square test of independence for our non-parametric um, test of association. And this assesses the strength of um, the relationship between two or more uh, nominal variables and it compares what we expect to see under the null hypothesis with what we observe from our data. So again we're dealing with, as we now know, um, our observed values and our expected values. And what we're looking at really is whether the difference between them is enough to say that we would observe this relationship in the population. Now we can see here um, we are back to our very familiar chi-square test a statistic okay, where we're dealing with our expected values and our observed values. Now the chi-square test statistic has a very different curve to that of a normal distribution. So the normal distribution as we know has got um, what we call a sort of bell shape. Um, in the example of a chi-square test the curve is positively skewed towards the right reflecting that it is showing the distribution of categorical data. Um, the exact shape depends on the number of the degrees of freedom which reflect the amount of variability there is in the table of values that you'll be working with. Um, large values means that um, the means are uh, means a more spread distribution um, and very large values mean that we end up with a curve that is very similar to a normal distribution in shape. Now let's work through an example of the uh, chi-square test. So here we have a table, okay, which gives us the um, likelihood of, of somebody voting um, and the area um, that they live in, so whether they live in a city or not in a city. So here we're looking at whether there is a relationship between whether or not somebody votes whether or not um, where someone lives, either in the city or not in the city, and the likelihood um, of them voting. Now, chi-square test um, is about comparing what we expect to see under our null hypothesis and what we actually end up observing from our data. So to do this, um, we have our observed values. Okay, so we know um, what what our sample looks like and we know what values have been generated from the people that we have asked. The next step we actually need to do is we need to calculate what the expected values are. Now from our data set um, we can calculate our expected values and what we simply do is we multiply the row total by the column total and we divide that by the overall total. And if we do that, that gives us, um, from cell 1, it gives us a value of 277.05. Cell 2 um, gives us a value of uh, 3622.95. Cell 3, um, 372.95. And cell 4, um, 4877.05. So those are our different cell values. Um, given our multiplication of our row total by our column total and our dividing that by our overall total. So what we do then is we, having done those calculations, you now end up with both our observed values and our expected values for each cell and you can put them in and we end up with a table that looks like this. So if we have a look at the data that's in the table, a total of 650 people said that they would vote. Um, you would expect 277 of those respondents to live in the city and 373 not to live in the city. However, the observed or actual data show that 400 people who said that they would vote live in the city and 250 do not. Now, that's great. 
but it's actually very difficult to tell whether these differences between what has what we've observed and actually what we what we expect whether these differences have occurred through chance or not now the chi-squared test statistic um, can be used to indicate whether the differences found between um, between this are actually statistically significant so between people living in a city not living in a city where that's significant whether that is statistically significant the test works by looking at the difference between the values of what we would expect to occur um, and the values that we have actually observed. So again, here we are, it's our chi-squared statistic and we're going to calculate our chi-squared manually for our example. So to do this, we need to um, break our table into the component parts of the chi-squared statistic. So we list our observed values, we list our expected values Next part of the equation, um, we need to minus our observed from our expected. Um, the fourth column in the equation, we then need to square that value. We then need to, our fifth column of the equation, we then need to divide that result by our expected value. And that then, if we add all of those up together, okay, so 54.56, 4.17, 40.53 and 3.10 that gives us our overall chi-squared statistic of 102.37. So our chi-squared value is 102.37 but what does that actually mean? Now first off we need to calculate the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. In our example that gives us a degrees of freedom of 1. If we look up on the chi-square table for degrees of freedom 1 um, at the appropriate significance level, okay, in our example we're looking up at the 5% or 0.05 significance level for degrees of freedom 1. Um, the critical value that this gives us, critical chi-square value, is 3.84. Now our test statistic at 102.37 is higher than the critical value, so we reject our null hypothesis and we accept the alternative. Now the chi-square test for independence is used for relationships between two nominal variables. Um, it can also be used to test a relationship between a nominal and an ordinal variable um, and it can also be used for testing uh, relationships between two ordinal variables. How, there are however more appropriate tests available for ordinal variables and scale variables that are not normally distributed. Um, there's those happen when we're generally dealing with small samples. Um, two tam the the uh, two sampled um, Smirnov test, the KS test, and the Man Whitney test um, are two of sort of most useful tests. And the general alternative um, to non-parametric methods of your two uh, your two sample t-test, they can be used to test whether two samples come from the same distribution. The two-sampled KS test um, uses the maximal difference between uh, cumulative frequency distributions of the two samples um, as the test statistic. Um, however, the uh, Mann-Whitney test takes the difference between means, um, the mean ranks of the two samples as the t as the uh, statistics. So it takes two slightly different approaches, and we're going to have a little look at each one. So for the KS test, um, it tests your null hypothesis that um, two groups are drawn from the same sample of population and share the same distribution. Um, it is equivalent to the Levine test, okay, when we were dealing back with our um, independent sample t-test. Okay, it makes absolutely no um, assumptions about the distributive data and it uses differences in cumulative frequency to represent the differences in the distribution. So how do we go about calculating it? Well, if we take um, different classes, so one to five, and we have a look at um, the aspiration, okay, um, the number in each class that have a low aspiration and have a high aspiration, you can see that here. Um, what we do is we calculate the cumulative frequency, okay, so basically that's adding up, okay, the different frequencies. So for high, we start off with um, 58, um, in class one um, had high aspiration 
with a 51 and class 2 also had high aspirations. Add those two together, it goes to 109. Add on um, the high aspiration numbers for 3 of 47, that gives us 156. Add on to that um, the high aspiration for class 4, which is 44, that gives us 200. Add on to the 200, the remaining 22 um, from class 5 who um, had high aspirations. And we do the same for our low aspirations. Um, we then have a look at our proportions. Okay, so we then calculate our proportions relative to that. And we then base our test statistic okay, on the difference between, um, on the largest difference between cumulative frequency proportions. So we can see here that the largest difference is actually um, 0.193. Okay, so the largest difference between our um, frequency proportions um, between uh, position 1 and position 2, so high and low for class 1 was 1.37, um, for class 2 was 1.39, 1, 1.91, class 3 was 1.93, and for class 4 was 1.03, for class 5 was exactly the same. Um, because obviously we're dealing with cumulative. So our largest difference um, was 0.193. Um, and this is the KS um, test in its equation form. So how do we go about interpreting the KS test? Um, the test statistic D, okay, that can be compared to critical value from a statistical table. If the test statistic is larger than the critical value, then we reject the hypothesis that the data set was drawn from um, the given theoretical distribution. Otherwise, we do not reject um, the hypothesis. If they are not drawn from the same population, um, and hence the assumptions underlying a Mann-Whitney are broken, then we end up doing a median test. Now, we're going to talk about median tests at the moment, but um, we're first going to deal with a Mann-Whitney test, and this is obviously assuming that they are drawn. So if you come out, if we, you do your, your KS test, and it comes out that they are drawn um, from the same distribution, we then progress on, um, as we do when we go from Levine's to independent sample t-test, we go from KS to Mann-Whitney. Um, we go, for, we progress on to Mann-Whitney, providing that um, they are drawn from the same population. Now, if KS is not significant, okay, we then proceed on to Mann-Whitney. Um, now, Mann-Whitney is obviously for two ordinal variables. Okay, uh, Mann-Whitney test is used to find out whether the difference between the means of two independent groups. So again, we're dealing with the word independent, so it is similar to an independent, okay, sample t-test. Um, it's used to find out whether the difference between the means of two independent groups achieves st statistical significance. Um, it's used to um, test the null hypothesis that two samples come from the same population, i.e. have the same median, um, or alternatively whether observations in one sample tend to be larger than the observations of another. Um, although it is non-parametric in its as a test, it does assume that the two distributions are similar in shape, and it is based on what we call the U statistic. Now the U statistic here, um, we can see our Mann-Whitney test. Okay, so for U1 we can see that we can see the equation given, and for U2 we can see that equation given. And we're going to talk about um, that a little bit more. So how do we go about calculating Mann-Whitney? Well, we arrange all the observations that we have in order of magnitude. Um, under each observation, we write down um, an X or a Y to indicate which sample they are from. Um, so, you know, say for example, are they from um, our sample which deals with a high level of a high level of aspiration, or are they in the sample that deals with low level of aspiration? So X or Y. Under each x, you write down um, the number of y's, which are smaller, um, which are smaller than, and you add up um, the total uh, number of times, and you denote that by um, ux. Under each y, you write down the number of x's, which are smaller than it, 
and you add up the total number of times and you denote that by u y. You take the smaller of these two values and look it up in the tables. If your u statistic is less than the critical value, then you reject your null hypothesis. If the chaos test is significant, then it means that um, you can't use a man Whitney. When you can't do this, you use a median test. And a median test is used to test whether two samples are drawn from populations with the same median. Um, the median of the combined data is um, calculated and then each original observation is classified according to its original sample A or B and whether it is less than or greater than the overall median. And it then compares how many um, of each group are above or below the overall median. So in summary, when we start off having a look at our non-parametric data, we need to start off by stating the null hypothesis and the purpose of the analysis. We then do a crosstab or a cluster bar chart to actually illustrate the relationship. We run our KS test and we interpret that. It is either significant or not significant. Um, that then leads us to either take that forward and do either a Mann-Whitney test or median test. And we then, once we have all of those results, we discuss those results and we utilise cross tabs to illustrate.